Meadows from Yellow Creek State Park with us. You brought your intern, Jess Barnhart, but Jess did not bring her snake today. <laughs> and Jess, I want you to know how thankful we are for that. <laughs> okay. okay. His name is Noodle. <laughs> Noodle the Snake is not here today. <laughs> yep. Lisa, good morning. <laughs> good morning. How are you, Todd? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So what's going on at Yellow Creek State Park? you got some lots, lots of things, don't you? We do. Um, we actually have some excitement going on at the park. Um, as a part of our, well, well I'm going to start off at the very beginning. We've been getting a lot of questions. Is the park closed as a result of the beach being closed? Mm -hmm. The park is still open. Everything is still open. The only thing that is closed right now is the beach, which will reopen after renovation in, in 2020. So we're really looking forward to that. As part of the beach renovation, one of the things we have to do right now is called a lake drawdown, which means we have to drop the levels of the lake down approximately three to four feet. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of water. It is. Um, we're doing that very gradually, though. And the good news, the reason why we're doing that is we have to excavate the old sand out from where the beach was at so we can put in the new sand to make it look a lot nicer and feel a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. So um, over the next two weeks, what's going to be happening is, like I said, they'll pull out the old sand, put down the new sand. And we hope in about two weeks or so, we'll uh, put the gate back down and start as it starts to rain around here, which we get plenty of rain, um, the level of the lake should go back up to normal give right. or take a little bit of time it will be a very gradual process so just so people are aware that um, levels are a little low now but we'll hopefully go back up um, as once we finish the beach renovation project and or i should say not finish but at least do the sand project people downstream will notice uh, a little bit more water in the in the culverts it's actually a li it's very gradual yeah. so no, that was part of the reason we have to do it very slowly and carefully so people really shouldn't notice too much downstream people will notice the levels at the lake are definitely lower mm -hmm. um however like i said it shouldn't be too long before they start going back up all right very good very good so so that's the physical stuff that's going on <laughs> at the yellow creek state park there are other things though aren't there there is we've got some really exciting programs going on this month uh one of them i want to draw attention to is jess's program we started a nature journaling program over at yellow creek um, called Fuzzy and Feathery Freehands Animal Drawing. So I'm going to let Jess talk a little bit about her program this coming Saturday. All right. Is, is, yeah. is Noodles going to be there then? No, no. Okay. This one's just drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take taxidermy. Got that a little closer to you there. And learn how to draw the taxidermy. Like So we're going to draw birds and mammals and stuff like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a drawing exercise. Yes. Okay. Well, that's fun. I'm excited about that's it. Fun. So it, it is from when to when? Um, it is from 1.30 to 2.30 on Saturday. Uh-huh. And it's at the, the normal place. What is it? The the Environmental Learning Center at Yellow Creek State Park. Never get that right. <laughs> never okay. get Most that right. Most people don't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's where that is. And anybody can come. Yes. Is it yes. designed specifically for an age group or um, anybody? Eight and up. Eight and up. Yep. There you go. Yeah, so we have another exciting event on Saturday. One of the things happening is uh, we have a, one of our local DCNR experts is coming in from Raccoon Creek State Park. His name is Shane Miller. Um, he's a well-known botanist within the state park system. Um, he's going to be leading a tree hike out at Yellow Creek on 6 o'clock to 7.30 on Saturday. We're going to meet at Lakeview Pavilion. Um, if anybody's interested, it is the hike is about 1.5 miles long. It is on um, some up and down terrain, so but we'll be stopping throughout the hike to check out different trees and learn about what's growing at Yellow Creek. Um, some other activities that are going on, uh, we have a really fun program coming up on Friday, August 16th. Um, it's called What's in My Belly. We're going to be dissecting owl pellets. Um, that program is geared... Say that slower. You're going to oh. do what? We are going to be dissecting owl pellets or these little things that might... Well, owls eat a lot of um, things that have furs and feathers in them, uh -huh. and they can't digest the furs and uh -huh. feathers. So what happens is they tend to bring that back up, and then um, we as scientists will dissect them to try to figure out what the owl is eating. Owl pellets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was just wondering what they have for lunch today, and now I know. <laughs> I was going to say, it's definitely interesting. Um, after we do that program, we actually have an owl prowl going on out at the park. Um, these programs do require pre-registration. People can email me at limeadows at pa.gov or limeadows at pa.gov. If you're interested, you can also check out our Facebook page or just Google Yellow Creek State Park events. You can get all the information to sign up on there. Yeah. You've got a lot of things that you have been doing. Even in August has just started. You've already had some neat programs. We have um, wow. a really exciting one. We just did Creatures of the Night's Bats out at Blue, or out at Pine Ridge Park, and it was really neat. We actually had a biology tech by the name of Sam Ruano come out from the Game Commission, mm -hmm. and that night we got to watch bats come out of the pavilion and fly around the park. It was a really nice family program. And Jess did a really fun program called Build a Bug, where she actually taught bug taxidermy to 19 people. Bug taxidermy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a whole lot of stuffing for bug taxidermy, no, do you? No, you don't need any at all. You nope. just kind of pin it up and let it dry. There you it's go. really fun. Yeah. So a little butterfly art going on there? Yeah. yeah. Actually, okay. cicadas. She did the 17-year cicadas. It was your I'll last time you. to get a 17-year cicada. So we were uh, laughing about that. So we were like, you're going to have to wait another 17 years to get another one. <laughs> your next shot. You've got all those years to refine your bug, your cicada art <laughs> yeah. before you get more subject matter. My goodness gracious. I said over the weekend there was a snake at our church picnic that came yeah. slithering on through. Uh -huh. Jesse would have loved that. Yeah, um, <laughs> she uh, would have. And, uh, and I don't have a problem with the snakes. I said bats, rats, and cats. Those are the three that I will not touch or go near. <laughs> you know, so, so those three things are beyond me. But snakes, not a problem. Yeah. yeah. So what kind of snake you got? I have a ball python. A? Ball python. Uh-huh. That is how long? He's about three foot. And how often do you have to feed him? So right now, actually... Snakes don't normally eat a whole lot. Yeah. They can eat a little bit, and it'll last them a long time. So it's been two months since he's eaten last. Yeah. Yeah. You know what they really like? Mm -hmm. Owl pellets. <laughs> <laughs> I've I mean, just heard that somewhere. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, owl pellets. What else, Lisa? Um, well, we have a really fun program coming up. It's called Rulers of the Skies. It's the first ever Eagle Osprey program that we've been that we're going to do at Yellow Creek State Park. Um, the first part that we're going to do is we're going to go outside and look for eagles and ospreys that hang out at the park. And then the second part, we actually invited Anthony Frazier in. He does some amazing photography with ospreys and eagles. He's going to show his photography of uh, eagles and ospreys of some of the great pics that he's gotten from local parks and areas mm -hmm. around here so that should be a lot of fun if people are looking for something to do um, another thing and later in that afternoon we're going to do more of a family program called hawks eagles and owls oh my it's all about just learning to id common birds of prey or raptors as we like to call them um, and then another part of that we're going to present a video from the pennsylvania game commission on the reintroduction of bald eagles and how they nearly disappeared from pennsylvania and how they're making an amazing comeback well, they sure are, aren't they? My goodness, they're everywhere. They are. And we actually, at one point, we only had three nesting pairs of bald eagles in Pennsylvania, I want to say in the late 70s, early 80s. Now we have over 270 nesting pairs. Mm -hmm. I think it's even more than that. And a lot of them here in the Indiana state. County. We do. I was going to say, yeah. I think there's at least three or four active nests that I'm aware of in this uh -huh. area. Yeah, it's it's big stuff. It's big doings over where I live in this Mixburg area. We've got eagles over there nice uh, thanks to the mahoning dam you know they that, love those dams that's what they look for. loyal hannah dams another great one if you're looking in the winter to watch eagles and osprey yeah they've got eagles. a really vibrant program down there they do yeah. i was gonna say at times we've uh i think anthony told me he's he has seen up to 20 to 30 birds hanging oh, yeah. out by the below the dam in the winter in fact that was our first eagle program we did this past spring as a result of that so at yellow creek what do you got you you have them you have eagles? we do have eagles and ospreys at yellow creek they don't mm -hmm. nest they're usually coming through and hunting for fish mm -hmm. so one of the things 
things. I know one of my favorite things to do is to watch ospreys die for fish when we're lucky enough to see them. Um, the biggest challenge we have is trying to figure out what time of day they're going to hit because it's kind of unpredictable. But usually I know at least a couple times a day we'll see bald eagles and ospreys flying over. Yeah, the little uh, farm pond at the bottom of my yard. There's uh-huh. a, I, I watched an osprey diving there. Oh. Uh, a little bit earlier this summer and uh-huh. it, you know he went straight up and then he just pew, straight down it was fun it's an amazing thing fun to, to watch. watch if you've yeah. never seen that so that program other programs how do people get access to them how do they they learn about them so if you want to learn about our programs um there's a couple different ways you can do that if you google yellow creek state park events page you can find all about it on there you can also if you're on Facebook, like our Facebook page. Uh, we post all our programs on there as well. Some programs require pre-registration, so make sure to sign up for those. Um, a little preview of a program I'm going to give on the radio station because I'm not going to post it till later in the month. We are going to be doing a paddleboard program. It will be the last one of the year on Labor Day Saturday. That program is for ages 12 and up. Um, I should say parents have to be in the park if their kids are going to partake in that. Mm -hmm. Um, And you are going to have to pre-register. Keep an eye on the Facebook page and the events page because that program literally fills within a week. All right. Very good. Very good. Lisa Meadows, Jess Barnhart, thank you so much for coming to visit with us. Thanks. We appreciate it. Uh, Next time, the snake is here. It's 26 (laughs) minutes after 9. It's the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, AM 1160, 101.1 FM.